Yeah. yeah. Uh, like in high school or this class or? I. It's a good question. I. I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, here we go. We started recording. I'll say hello to everyone that we're missing. Hi, everyone. Hi. You see how excited they are. <laughs> so how you can use this is I'm going to go through today's normal thing. Welcome to Fast Forward Anytime or meet Lydia. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> okay. Wait, excuse me? Too soon. What too did soon. you say? Soon. Nothing at all. What Nothing did he at say? all. <laughs> what did he say? So yes, um, I'm sorry that you have to watch this thing, but I do need you to be able to do this up, especially since I won't see you till next Thursday. So here we go. Let's get started. All right. Welcome, welcome. Today's big question is this. How can I learn the final types of AP Pro's uh, multiple choice college questions? And here's how we're, we're going to do with it. Today we're going to draft uh, some six word memoirs, which is one of my favorite types of writing. Yes. We're going to finalize your safety, and we haven't done this yet, but I'm going to show you this concept, and thus I am recording this for you as well, uh, your multiple choice study guide. And then finally, you're going to turn in the first half, one through five, of your pros unit checklist. Uh, I want to put those into Skyward today so that you can be up to date. Uh, we're halfway through the unit checklist now, so hang on to everything, and I promise that we'll all get it in. All right, let's do scribble number 15. Those of you watching the recording, you can do it at home or feel free to fast forward to the content part. It's up to you. Here we go. Up at the top of your page or somewhere to the side, just write four general words that describe you. Oh, come on. I know. No words just to, and so if you can't think of anything else, human, girl, student. Boring. Boring, yes. <laughs> but you can probably come up with something better. So just four general things that describe you. Give her mind that I did. That's great. I came up with Cheeto, soda, food, and addiction. Apparently, I have a food addiction. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> so, cheese, soda, food, addiction. I could I could talk all day about Cheetos and the various nuances of Cheetos. Would you like the the puffy Ariel Oh yeah, I like it. But which ones do you like better, the normal ones? Puffy. puffy Ariel. Uh, normal because I love the flaming hot ones. Yeah, the like Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of like little mini guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I have a problem. I had a food addiction, and now you're. Okay, so. <laughs> can you give us a second. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you give you about ten I seconds. Know. Just jot down. This is just a brainstorming thing, and then we're going to play with that idea in just a second. Thanks. How many words? Uh, just four. Four general things that describe you as a person. It can be abstract, it can be concrete, whatever you want. All right, I'm going to talk over you as you finish. Now, the reason I do this is in just a moment, we're going to play with a type of story called a six-word story. And I'll show you a quick video that gives you the background of, supposedly it was invented by Ernest Hemingway, um, but uh, it's always fun every time. And it has actually a very good AP Lit purpose, which we'll play around with it in the last half of class. So you could describe yourself in so many words. You have four kind of banks right now to play with. Your job is to come up with as many six words. Look at her face right now. I don't like this. Are you, no, I, I'm not even missing words, but Hannah, no, Savannah said last period, like, oh, this is hard. And eight minutes later, she said, this is fun. I hope to have that transformation. If not, it's your problem, not mine. So I'm just too sassy for today's thing. Like, today we're going to just meet up on this. <laughs> um, it's really fun. Here's why. Here are a few examples. I'm going to dim the light so you can see them. That's very good. So clever. And I, and I, oh, so there's my, one of my favorites. <laughs> if God were to write his own six word story. <laughs> oh, and here is a little video that will give you some tips so that you can run with this kind of genre. So this is. Now, question. Like yeah. an actual question. Okay, yeah. Not a sassy question. Not a sassy okay. question. So, do you want us to create one six word story or multiple? As many as possible. We'll kind of draft around and see which one works best during our eight minutes. All right, here are some guidelines to help you with your six-word memoir writing. Legend has it, Hemingway was once challenged to write a novel in just six words. His response? For sale, baby shoes never worn. This magazine... And I'll pause for a moment. And this is the beauty of a well-crafted six-word story, is there's so much embedded within it. 
So, what would the mood of this story be? Funny? Sad? Why is it sad? It's funny. It's funny. It's funny, but I feel like it's not like... Okay, yeah. Yeah. Because the baby was too sad. I was wondering if it's like a depressing girl. Oh, I like that. That's good. The baby's not dead? Now, now, someone did say last class because so, uh, Brandon had said in our, he's like, well, no, maybe the shoes were just too small. But then we looked up, hmm, why were they never born? And, like, you would just. Maybe uh, they were because of my reason. They were again. And you just knew straight up? Okay, take whatever you want from it. There you go. All right, here are a few other examples. I decided to give the six word form a personal twist, challenging its readers to write a six word memoir. I, I like this one because you need to see. What exactly is happening? Met wife at her bachelorette party. So who is telling the story? Either the caterer or someone else. Who, uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> no? I do. Yes. Yeah, here's another good one. One second. Uh, this is Amy Tan, and I love these stories of like famous and successful authors who were told all along like they were terrible writers and like, oh, I'll show you. It made me almost consider like maybe I need to start telling you like you're terrible writers just so you can spite me. Like I'll show you Potter like hey good now you're writing even better. <laughs> it only works if it's personal. Remember it's a memoir. Remember it's a memoir. So we're going to play with this format, um, not only because it's a challenge, but it's also fun, but there's a purpose that I want to play around with later today. So for the next eight minutes, your task is to write as many eight, oh, I'm sorry, write as many six-word stories as possible. <clears throat> Are you up to the challenge? I'll start you out. Mine are not that good, but we're going to get better. This is one of my favorite, though. I lost my phone earlier today. I went looking for it, and a student handed me a cinnamon roll. Best story ever. Looking for phone, found cinnamon roll. I like this story a lot. There you go. All right, so I'll put eight minutes on the clock after I walk over here. What are as many six word stories about you? Wait, why did we write the four words? It's just as a bank of like, here's something that you can play around with. It's, it's a pre assessment kind of.
About two minutes left. Final 40 seconds. Alright, finish your last thought. Those of you watching the video, you can definitely fast forward if you stuck around this long, but now they're going to share with each other. Take about uh, three minutes, share some of your best ones with someone nearby. Or share some of your worst ones so that they can become your best ones. Either, either way, go. Okay.
I was just appreciating I live for a conversation. Full service. Well, this one's that last one. Everything that he said to the remaining of three was exactly six. I don't know what that means. Really? Yeah. Wow. He was thinking very carefully what to say. He, like, counts every time we set up. He must have been doing it beforehand or along the way. It's just, uh, I, I too hard. <laughs> All right, any that you heard that your partner shared or that you thought? Yeah, go ahead. Can I share my Oh, my gosh. Julia's been throwing it on the bus. There you go. Are you? Uh, we're only recording this for millions of people. Like, what should be? I won't if you don't want me to. Okay. What? Yeah. Kelly's, Kelly's. Okay. 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 Brighter girls stuck inside colorful worlds. Oh, nice. Why is that interesting? That's actually pretty cool. It's cute. Nathaniel has said it's actually pretty good. He wasn't sure. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. My mental maturities are actually outliers. Thank you, Michael. That's good. You're too good for this class. Get out of here. You're <laughs> <laughs> good for this class. Hey, there you go. Let's just go. Yeah, nice. Get out of wrote? here, you monster. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> read, that, read that one you wrote. What was that one? The one oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I do feel remorse for teasing. No more teasing. <laughs> I, I you like like it. you know it. <laughs> <laughs> any, any, any I do feel remorse. Not any more. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I got it. Okay. Oh, now there's a purpose to this. Not only I think it, it's a, a very creative kind of writing, I think it also stretches you in a num numerous ways. Here are a few. Uh, hopefully it's fun. And uh, as we head in the next couple of months into like practice essay writing and whatnot, I know. Uh, you've been clamoring, just like, this is a fair. Like, but no, I, I promise I try to make it as organic and natural and um, non GMO as possible. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want. Hey. Yeah. Yes, so those of you watching, our essays hopefully will be cool, and if not, then you can get a refund at the end of the school year. How about that? Oh, because <laughs> well, you paid so much. Oh, today I want you to think about, especially since we've been doing a lot with passages this week, of how you are taking lots and lots of information. And if you didn't remember where I was this week, I was looking through sage testing items and whatnot. And man, I have to admit, there were some passages that even I, the great magnificent potter, sat back and like, I have no idea what's going on here. This is so complicated. And I had to remember the same stuff that you and I have been practicing of. Okay, I need to break it down. So at the end of every paragraph, the little section, what are the six most important words? And I jot them down. And then I, as I just kind of did that type of mentality, it made a lot more sense. But then I also felt bad for the 11th graders that have to take that test. Oh, this is kind of cool. Memoir means, it comes from the 15th century. It means written record from Anglo-French memory which means note, memorandum, or something written to be kept in mind. This, I think, is very pertinent to you, especially as you're attempting to tackle classics, passages, poetry, stuff that you have a lot of things to work with, but how can you document what's happening along the way? And so if nothing else, this is why I've tried been, been emphasizing with this unit, make sure that you are interacting on the paper with your text. You're almost kind of writing a six-word memoir of each little section that you're reading so that you can use it to your advantage, whether to appreciate it more or to pass a little bit higher on a test, whatever is going to work best for you. So that's why uh, we've played with it uh, now, but we're also going to play with it after our break. All right, I need to do a quick checkup, though, because I was gone and because I got different things from my... Oh. So from what I've seen, your sub kept you pretty much on track, yes? yes. Yeah. Okay. So will you do me a favor? Will you please pull out your unit checklist and kind of gauge with the person next to you, where are we right now? And I'll show you where I think we are. Let's see if it matches up, hopefully. That way I can clarify what's been turned in. And if you haven't turned these in, please turn them in today so I can put them in the Skyward. And then I can give you the rest of your checklist in the upcoming week. Okay. And that's fine. If you turn that in today, totally fine. So those of you that are gone, make sure you check in with your checklist as well so that I can get these from you. Um, this is my personal note to you right now. I'm going to put in everything into Skyward today. I'm going to leave yours blank, but when I see you again next week, we'll update it from there. 
All right, here's what the checklist looks like. And I've written to the sides here. Don't write to like the date. I would write like the dates that we do them and the, and the due dates over here, but this is just for your own reference so far. So before I uh, left town and before I shipped off to Sageland, we finished these three. You should have gotten to at least 15 points. Well, not at least 15, but so you should have awarded yourself top 15 points from there. Any questions about items one through three? Yes. Um, I was on, and so it's something else. We were going to get the work from you, uh, when, but then uh, we had stuff for two days. Yes. So I was wondering if there's somewhere I can make that up. Yes. So if you are missing, especially the uh, the pre-assessment or We the Living in 1984, see me during the break, and I'll get that for you. Yeah. Thank you. We're good with one through three. All right. What's that? 11, like if you came and you did it, you get 11 points. Okay. That would be the C level. All right, if you haven't already graded yourself there, please go ahead and do so. And then here was the update. So on Monday, you should have done number four, and this is due today. So this was Amy Silverberg's Write This Down. Mainly we we're looking for those Save Me principles. Uh, quiz the person next to you, what does Save Me stand for? Aha! Don't worry, we'll get to it. We'll get back there. Don't worry about that. Uh, but when I hear this as the over, uh, then we're in good hands. <laughs> Thank you. Good. It's all there, but we need it here. We need it right here, and we'll work on that today. So today, if you haven't already, did you turn this in last time? Yeah. And if you haven't, please get it to me today. I'll mainly make it awesome, make it good. You should also have in your notes guides uh, from the Save Me stuff there. Any question about number four? All right. Number five, you did a little bit with Save Me Elements with The Story of an Hour by Kate Chopin. And then you were trying to develop at least three multiple choice questions based off of the info that you had on your sheet. So I tried to give, like, these are example AP style questions. Were you able to do that here in class? I did. I did. Okay. Awesome. Good. And if you did that, then it's greatly going to benefit you and the angels are happy. Uh, so that was the last time, and that's due today. You'll turn that in today. Any questions about number five? Great. <laughs> Sorry, I need to focus. Um, I was just thinking, like, we don't say anything to someone with hiccups except just, like, I was about to say, oh, bless you, but they're like, no, I can't say bless you. It was a hiccup. That's my dad. When he hiccups, I'm like, bless you. <laughs> Yeah. I, I'm going to say bless you for coughs, for hiccups, for burps, not for everything. Well, I was like, of course he laughs when I hiccup. <laughs> Here's what we're working on today. So you've done the first elements of uh, what appears on multiple choice tests with the pro section. Today we're going to take a little bit of notes in just a moment. This is why I'm recording for everyone, so pay attention right now, please. Yes, put away all distractions. And, uh, well, maybe they're like watching another thing somewhere else. Uh, so this is what we're going to do with tape sass. Here we go, my friends. Do you have your notes in front of you? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Put that checklist aside. We're going to turn it in in about 40, 45 minutes or so. But put that aside because it is now time to see how well you are grasping the concepts and questions on AP Multiple Choice Pros questions. All right. Uh, full disclosure, I know some of you have already made that decision. Uh, well, I'm not going to take the AP test. I'm just here because I didn't want to take uh, my five minutes. Uh, ultimately, it's like, and you're stuck with me, we, what can we do? The stuff that we're looking at is very test specific, and it builds on what we were talking about over there, of like, basically, this is what good readers do, but the bonus is, along the way, you can practice with your chosen novels, with passages. If I cover this stuff now, not only does it raise your reading awareness of how you can do a close reading, then it also starts you practicing so you don't feel that despair in the of like, oh my gosh, the test is in a few weeks. So this is why I started now, to kind of continue it naturally throughout the rest of the year. So good? Yeah. All right. Let's see what we got here. Oh, this is where you, I want you now to confer with someone nearby. This week you played with these concepts, save me. Take two minutes to describe to someone nearby, what does this mean? How do you look for it overall? What's your understanding of this? Go ahead. It's like right there. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean for that to happen. Well, if you want, you can like look, a, you can look up or whatever. Yeah. Oh, I forgot the hit. What was it? I better do that off camera. Like, 
I forgot what the hips was. Like the, uh, the hips were better. Oh! What was it? It was for the hips was Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll look at it right now. It was implied. Yeah, implied. It's implied. Oh, my God. You're the one who came up I know. I felt terrible about it, too. Oh, I forgot. Poor, poor All right. Oh, because, and, and, and I know that you're like, okay, we did this. Because I wasn't here, I want to just do a lightning quick round of here's what it is. That way you can ask me questions of, well, how is this different? Or what does this look like? So here we go. First off, S is straightforward facts. And notice that I put little pictures. When we do our tape fast part today, I would also encourage you to draw little pictures. Whatever you can do as learners to make this permanent, to make it sure that you know what we're going with. Here's some straightforward facts. This is what was uh, explicitly stated in the, in the text. Make sure to do exactly what we've been doing, ultimately underlining, finding the main things. And these are a few question types. <laughs> Any question about this? Pretty straightforward? <laughs> okay. There were two absences from the past. Man, someone be seven had the greatest question. What? This person said, hmm, how is this different than inferences? Because part of saving me is inferences. Let's see if you can distinguish the difference. So absences from the passage is information not included. Well, you hear me out here. So this is where, if you're looking at a question, you're crossing off everything that is included. So here's an example. All of the following except. Or reasons for Virginia's outburst do not include. Could someone bravely venture forth and tell me, how is this different than inference? Like inferences, you look at what the text gives you, and then you make your best best guess. Say, I think this would be true. Like for the writing down story, it's like you can make an inference that she was an alcoholic. Yeah, yeah. Or like, and then with the absences, it's like you could talk about all her descriptions. Like with that other story, it's like it didn't include his moving, but it did include his physical description. So it's like, what did they say? Perfect. Yeah. It, it's no. You said it so well. It's pretty much like were you paying close enough attention to see when they throw in like, hey, this person was moving. No, 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 that wasn't there. That's when that's the one you're trying to find. So essentially, you're weighing out the explicit, you know, details and which one of those was not included. That's the one you're looking for. Uh, my personal distaste of like, okay, I can see where it's coming from. I hate these kind of questions, but until we change the world, we we shall. Vocabulary context, we've been playing a lot with this, uh, especially with our poetry. Oh my gosh, I owe you so many poems a day, so we'll just have poetry marathon next time. Uh, um, yes. Vocabulary yes. context, this is where you are trying to figure out, uh, you know, not only the definition, but what's the meaning of that word and any scope from there. Here are a few tips to help you with that, but you should have these in your notes on all these. Oh, I did a lot of this this week for the passages, and maybe it warmed my heart if we're on the right. Okay, here's a typical one. In the context of line one, blank may be defined as, and that's where you look for the scope. Any question about this? Okay, here's E, equivalent statement. This is where you are generating similarities between the text. So it's like this. If something is mentioned here, but it's referenced later, you're like, oh wait, okay, if this was earlier. So you're just looking for similarities and commonalities throughout the passage to see how are you connecting ideas and types of ideas. A few questions are like this. The same meaning is expressed by, so they refer to another part. It states a similar sentiment, or which statement most closely expresses the same ideas as. Do you, does this make sense? It's a little bit trickier, but I think I've seen enough somewhat happy expressions. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. That was a very good question. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, we will. Right now we're doing foundational stuff, and then we'll start going more. All right, main idea is pretty simple. Uh, I like this little drawing of if you have enough supporting details, then you have the theme or the main idea. This is your big purpose or takeaway. Here are a few example test questions. It could be overall for the piece, or it could be for specific lines or passages as well. All is well, maybe then. Okay. Finally, inference. Uh, this is one of my favorite things. You're a little detective, so you're building a bridge between what appears in the passage and probably is true. There are a few simple.
close your eyes or look up. And then reach out to someone. Quiz the person next to you what a save means. understand the test. I, I want it to be a friendly thing. That, like, I know exactly what it is, but we'll do a little bit more practice for the upcoming weeks of, now that you know what it's looking for, here's how to find it. <laughs> do you need to, do you want a quick break now before we dive in? Or do you want, are you ready to dive in? This will take about, this will take about eight to ten minutes. Do it, right. Do what I want? Yeah. What do you want? Are you with me? Yeah. You are? Yeah. All right. I'm with you, my lord. <laughs> Thank you. That's nice. Here we go. Let's add the last equation. I think we can do this quickly, but also if you've been through the AP Lang route or if you've had good English teachers, a lot of this will be commonplace to you. Let's see how we can build on that background knowledge. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I present tape sass, which I would draw a little like yeah. soft tape saying like your mama jokes because Wait, you want what? Wait, what's happening? No, like what she said. Oh, okay. What did she say? What? <laughs> Oh, okay, so I would consider tape sass as you think of your duct tape saying sassy things Ouch. about the things that the duct tape is using. Actually, what's your uh, friendship? Put my face next to it. Okay. <laughs> as you know, this is kind of color coded uh, with the, the and B7 was growing like, oh my gosh, why do we have all these little like cootsies? Of this? Because it just takes a lot of content and puts it in member of member of the little chart. And as we play with them over the next few months, it'll be coming. All right. All right. Let's start with tone and attitude. Now this goes somewhat in a different route, but here's what it is. Attitude is the author's personal feelings about a subject. Brianna had a great question last period. She said, are we talking about the author? Are we talking about the narrator? Are we talking about the speaker? For now, our working thing is, this is the author, the actual person who wrote this, has a certain attitude about whatever he or she is writing about. How does the person convey this? That's through tone. Tone is the use of stylistic devices to reveal that personal feeling. So grasp on that for a moment. Attitude is, here's how he or she feels about it, and tone is the way that he or she expresses it. Here's some examples. What you could do as a reader to identify the tone, because um, it seems kind of like a vague thing of like, well, you know, I don't know. There's enough emotionally triggering words to convey, oh, okay, I see what this guy or this, this woman is saying. Also, this is a nice vocabulary word for you. Does the diction, this is a specific word choice, reveal a particular attitude about the subject? With that in mind, it'd be pretty easy to identify the tone and attitude. More of what AP looks at is tone, but attitude is almost kind of the assumption of how to get to the tone. this to short-term memory. So I'm going to give you about 90 seconds now to do something else with this. You're, you're dutifully jotting down notes, which is great, but how could you make this stick? For example, can you try your own hand at a question like this? So what would this look like on an AP test? Can you make a drawing? Can you come up with a jingle? Give you about 90 seconds to play with you. You're on your own with the person next to you. How does this translate into something that will stick and not just simply notes? Got it. Oh, that was fast. Feeling real. Right? Okay. Well, 
thought it was great. Apparently it's not that great. <laughs> I saw it was great. I saw it was Like it's just about your brain. Just <laughs> open it <laughs> Are you going to do a dance again? <laughs> <laughs> You're considering your work. <laughs> 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 You're There's going to be a lot of head movement, but I'm sure there's enough for that. You could do like, you could do like a move. Assuming. Assuming. <laughs> you put on like one of those like flapper things. How do I feel about shimmy? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Don't watch this video anymore. No. <laughs> if you forget, you're like, oh my gosh, you're cool. Like, you're filming now. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that, like, one person will watch for five minutes. Like, it was boring. Like, you know, that's better. Okay. <laughs> 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 you missed all the shit he has. <laughs> oh, here's the other thing. As I walked around, I thank you for, for seeing this through with me. It's somewhat boring to, like, talk theory. I believe that once we have that foundational knowledge, then when we dive into the passages, which is where it's going to happen, like then it's going to be much better. So thanks for bearing with me for another seven minutes or so. This is somewhat dry, but man, it really opens a lot of theory. All right, uh, the PE start, uh, part starts for purpose or effect, and this is where you, as a reader, are analyzing elements of style and why things are there. I, I don't like the way I wrote it, inclusion, but like pretty much you step back from the text and think, hmm, why is this line here? Why is this passage here? What does this do? What's the effect of this? So you're scrutinizing not necessarily the content, but how it's all kind of put together. Here are a few uh, descriptions of what it would look like. Up. The description of line two to three serves primarily to, or blank is going to line four in order to, or what is the function or purpose of paragraph five? It's more of the uh, hammer and nails kind of. Why is this passage put this way? What's the effect of the way that this happens? Oops, sorry, go back. And again, make sure your notes are personalized for you, whether it's Shimmy, Mr. Potter, whatever it may be. It's something in there that you can emotionally connect with. Okay. I don't know if I can emotionally connect to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, with like a, re a revulsion, just. <laughs> He shakes those hips one more time. <laughs> <laughs> see, they can't see this right now because they're filming this here, so I could just like stay here. <laughs> All would be well. <laughs> All right, so that's the tape part. So so far we've had tone, attitude, purpose, and effect. Now we get to the sassy bit. All right, the essay stands for structure and arrangement. Uh, Hayden came up with a great analogy last period. Last period, you're just getting on these. Man, things. they are my favorite B7 class hey. this oh, year. Oh, I was like, hey! Like, hey. <laughs> you are my favorite B8 class oh. by far this year. I feel so oh, hard. Oh, yeah. Like, you're, not, you're my number one B8 class. Oh, I feel so hard. That's the truth. Oh, he said. So <laughs> Julia. So here's what we're looking for. The question is, so why did the author arrange the ideas or events in this way? That'd be more of an arrangement. And then also taking note of what, oh, well, actually, I want to go back because I get to that in a second. I know. I'm just going to leave this for you here. He said structure is a lot like a house. So the, the style of a house is very, you know, subjective. You could build any kind of century, Victorian, whatever you want. But the arrangement of how every, all the furniture is arranged is very much like what makes a house. So structure is the overarching structure of the whole piece. And then the arrangement is within it how it was arranged from there. So that would help you answer this. Now, one example of this, so last time you read the Kate Chopin story, uh, there was a shift. And this is where the author takes you from one set of ideas to another. Just speculation, where do you think this happens? Take note of when something changes, such as through a shift and the effect of the change. It was kind of obvious. Where, where did you feel there was a shift? Was this the one about her oh. like, husband? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So where, where was one of the shifts? Because I think there were... It was, like, um, it was all like... She was goofy and sad, and that right and feeling begins to take place, and she begins to like free, free at last. Yeah, and yeah. Really so the first shift of like, oh my gosh, she's dealing with his death, and then she's like, oh, I'm free. And then there was a final shift. What was the shift right at the end? When she died. Yeah. She died. Hey, honey. Ah, like she's she done. Like so we had the shift of oh weird. Like, that was an amazing reenactment, by the way. No, <laughs> well, I was I I was in theater for a while. I've never. Watched it. I don't know. 
Yeah, so we'll do this shift of like, oh, we keep having these ideas, but the officers kind of keep shifting. Um, here's an example. The passage as a whole moves from, or here's another one, the shift to first person point of view. So this is where you're analyzing overall structure and arrangement. Oh, I forget the name of the woman's story. It's been a while. Louise? You just feel so bad. What? Wait, you feel bad? Oh, I feel bad for her. Yeah. I know. You felt that she was crazy. Wait, really? Well, I thought like I thought it was like some sort of no, sick coping mechanism. Like, yeah, I'm gonna drink live out of this window. Like, what even? Yeah, I thought she was gonna. Oh, okay. Don't ask me about that. Don't ask me about that. No one reacts that way. No, if she had a drink of water, that was not my she always was like, oh, it's weird that she was like a Yeah, yeah, okay. I've never, I'm glad you brought that up. I need to reread. That's an interesting and key detail there. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to reread. I like that. So maybe she's the one at fault here. I've always thought of like, oh no, you're a terrible Yeah. I thought it was that thing where I was like, maybe it's a coping mechanism. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Like silver linings, please. All right, here's our last one. This is syntax. Oh, yeah. Syntax. Those of you with AP lang people know what syntax is. Here's a working man's definition. The grammatical structure of a sentence. So the nitty gritty of what parts of speech or, you know, how is a sentence put together? How does this person who's somewhat graduated from some type of English course put this sentence together for a purpose? Here are a few examples of what this Look like as you're analyzing. The introductory clauses such as lines, oh, I meant to uh, one that says act as, or the repetition of blank in lines 12 and 15 suggests that, or the structure of the last step that serves to. All right. And that is it. Oops, sorry, I'm moving my camera. Oh, I've included in these slides, and this is where, you know, I'll, I'll have them up during the break. Our, our task is to not only identify what it is, but how it's written. And I think one of the best ways that I found, especially with last year's class who dominated the multiple choice, was they started to write their own questions in the vein of a, you know, these type of questions. And when they did that, either as they were reading on their own or reading something with someone else, it helped a lot to get a grapple of this particular type of stuff. Sue, so, oh yeah, and also in line 12, the intro first. Before we take our break, Go ahead and close your notes real quick. We're, now we're only testing your short-term memory right now, but go ahead and have a conversation with someone. What is this? How, how does it look? What, how can you make this stick? Just give you that before we take our break. Are you ready? Yeah. But I'm not going to whisper it again. Oh, my All right, we have it in our short-term memory. 
Now, one of the best ways we're going to do after the break is to know the theory is one thing, but to practice it with uh, pros, that's when it's going to start to stick. However, let's take a four-minute break. You two at home who are watching, you go ahead and take a four-minute break. I need you to grab the passage we're going to play with today. It's either here on my desk, it's back there on the round table, or over there. And I'll see you back in four minutes. We're going to do that right when we come back. Yeah, I guess you could. Well, no, hang tight for four minutes and then we'll Thank you. Do you need an item? Yeah, I have got some gone. Okay. Oh, oh, nice. Alright. Which one are you? Uh, don't worry. Oh, here we go. I found Story of an Hour. Was there anyone else that needed Story of an Hour or write this down? Oh, I teach B7 because they're my favorite B7 class. I told them that I once broke up with a girl via email, but I don't have time to tell you that story today. What? I know. Wait, 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 hold up. I know. Wait, no, I have a teacher who said something like that. Really? I thought I was the only idiot. they let us read the thing. And it was like really, really rude, and then he had us read every other word, <laughs> and it was like really, really nice. No, that's not good. Wait, oh, that's why would he do that? Because it was awesome. Okay. Like, he's like, it's like you read it like a regular letter, and then at the end, the last sentence says, now read every other word, and every other word just like talks about how much he loves her and everything. Aww. But like the whole letter itself was like, you're so ugly, like why would I... I don't know if I can. I, yeah, I don't think I'd go back. I love it. I was like, print that out. I want to use it. I wish I were that clever, but no, I was. I was not that like clever. Callie. 
Get with the program. I didn't realize. <laughs> use your brain. I don't use have your... one. That's what school's for. And then they use your brain. brain. All right, welcome back. I am oh yeah, grab a cushion. Okay, so this is where we're gonna play for the last part of class today. Um, please make sure your name's on top. Now this will be items. Let's check your checklist real quick. This is item number six. So today we're gonna take this tape staff knowledge and play around with it with annotations, but also for item number seven, you're going to, and since I won't see you till next Thursday, you'll have plenty of time. It's a little bit of a longer passage for you to play around with looking in this scope, but also for you to develop your own styles of questions. This will all be due on Thursday the 8th, but I want to get started with it today. Oh, all right. Now, remember a couple of weeks ago when I gave you a list of items that frequently appear on the AP exam? And, and several students had asked me, like, well, which ones do you recommend? I can't recommend because I'm, what's that? Exactly, yeah. And so the goal before we, um, <laughs> Stop. I was trying to like be, no, okay. Oh, I wholeheartedly recommend The Grapes of Wrath. It was one of the most impactful reads that I read in high school. To show you a style of what, oh no. no. And see, this is why I say like, like <gasps> every book I've ever read for an English class, I've loved except this book. Really? Yes. Why? May I ask why you did not? I don't even know. It was so bad. I'm probably going to love it then because I didn't like any of that. <laughs> 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 I, I could not stand it. Really? But you can't think why you couldn't stand it? No. Is it like, like the way When did you read it? What grade? Uh, sophomore year. So like two years ago. On your own or with the class? With the class. That's oh, why. That's why. That's, that's, that's probably why. Read, like, but like, yeah. all the other books that I've read with the class, I love. Okay. But, like, what about, like, this is like the I love Okay, so I'm going to love this. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Oh, no. Nope. Okay. Would not recommend it. Zero out of ten. Oh, that's so hard. With this science that she is now. Yeah, so. I'm excited. Man, I can't wait to read your annotations on this thing. It's going to be like a little chill. It's going to be like, like, is that me? Is that me? Oh, my gosh, I'm burning on this. Anyway, back to it. Here we go. Oh, um, now I forgot what I was going to say with it. Take a look. Why do you love it so much? Oh, what I love it's the it's one of the most powerful things I, I had read at the time. So and and I think it's personified fear. And I think it's also personified fear. One reason why I want you to encourage uh, why I want to encourage you to read your own classics. Um, you know, first off, so you can decide whether you like it or not. But second, so that you can also build up your background knowledge. There's only so much that I can do with you throughout the school year, but the more that you are building up your background knowledge, the more that, you know, courses in college will make sense, the more that those hot dates you're on will have better conversations. Like, there's so many applicable things that you get to choose. Talk about the grapes of wrath. Exactly. <laughs> when in a bowl, like so. Just by the look on my face. What do you think of Paul's road and the grapes of wrath? Oh, look at this picture. And I've used this before with my 11th graders, so some of you are having some deja vu. Very famous picture. I think most of you know the okay. historical context of it. We'll talk about it in just a second. But just yeah, yeah. But do, but do it inside your head first, and then we'll talk about it. As you look at this picture, right now you are tapping into your background knowledge about a certain place, a certain time, and certain condition. So you're asking yourself, what do you already know about those? You're essentially mapping out like, oh, okay, set it up. But also, you're adding this anticipation of, well, what more can you add to that knowledge? Where you exhale, apparently. I don't know. Um, so take a look at this for 10 seconds, and then you're going to talk about it with someone nearby for 60 seconds. What do you know? What do you want to know more? Well, go ahead. Talk. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
And it's probably in there somewhere, and this yeah. accessing it, that's a whole different matter. Saying, I'm gonna be like, oh. so, so her name is Dorothea... Oh. Dorothea Lang. Yeah. <sighs> nope. Again, next day. Oh. Um, <laughs> do you know the name of this, of this picture? No. Or what would you guess would be an adequate Dust Bowl? Okay, so we know it's a Dust Bowl related. So I, I believe the official title is Migrant Worker, Wife, and Kid. I have to forgot how to <laughs> and, and it wasn't until last year, actually, that I did this for my 11th grade, I never even noticed this baby right here. Oh, well, then I, I thought that was her arm. I know, it was weird. <laughs> oh, and so then I was like, oh, can oh, there's a baby there, too. Can we, like, elaborate? Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Um, how is a baby can you baby think? Right here. I'm going can you hear to, the like, eyes? Hear the okay, watch out. Wait, watch oh, out. all right, everyone here's Lydia. <laughs> <laughs> did it take over? So, how did you think that that was her arm? It looks like, like she's sitting like this. The skin yeah, of this. Well, but it looks like she like Lydia her arm Lydia, to like a Lydia. Like she has like a blanket on her lap. But that has nothing to do with yeah, psychology. Yeah, like, it just the way the picture is kind of stuck Oh, that's not the picture. But like, if you think it's, that's it's, her arm, it's, 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 it's a different perspective for us. It's like a picture. It's a sleeping baby. It's not like you know someone someone points it out to you. Like, oh, that's that's like yeah. Alright, now regardless of weird looking arms and whatnot, <laughs> here's where I'm going to ask you, and this is going to almost kind of solidify your background knowledge. This is a Pulitzer Prize winning photograph, which means it does something that a lot of, so there are, you know, thousands of pictures taken during the Great Depression, or as it was called in Canada, the Dirty Thirties, which I've never <laughs> heard before today. I guess also oh, Canada was I love how they laugh. <laughs> That's what gym oh, my teachers called it. They're like the dirty thirties. We're gonna talk about the dirty thirties, and we're all like, okay, okay. <laughs> Canada, yeah, we went through the depression too. The whole world did. Which I, I, I never. <laughs> it's not just the, the whole world. Canada. Canada. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, that's very. That's fine. Oh, tell me why this is such a significant photograph. Just and there's no right or wrong answer, but what do you think? Okay, wow. two things. So I think for the two children, how they're like turned away, and it seems like the baby's also kind of turned away, mm -hmm. but the woman is obviously staring whatever it is straight on, okay. so I feel like she's like trying to act strong by staring at it, but you can see it in her forehead, all of the creased lines. Okay, so there's, there's a mixture of emotion here, especially like, is she, is she giving up, is she, you know, we're almost trying to empathize and relate to what's going on, but it, what you I just didn't say it captures like the despair that it's felt and also like the busy anxiety and like the oh, I don't know what's coming like like anticipation almost like okay. it just captures like that what am I gonna do like that unknowing yeah you want to know like are, are, are do these people live is this what's gonna happen to this child like you you can obviously sense like there's a great ex an anxiety of like there's so they've been through so much already like what's gonna come on next any other thoughts thank you for your is one reason why I love the Grapes of Wrath. Because what this does in one frame, I believe the Grapes of Wrath did so well in seven, eight hundred pages of portraying this is what it was like. So even though it's fiction, this is exactly this mixture of emotions. This is this almost like train wreck of a ride of what would it be like to have everything taken from you and to think, can I survive? What can I do for my children? And so it rocked me to the core when I was in 11th grade because I just thought like, oh man, like, I, what would I do? Would I roll over and give up? It rocks 
to me even now as a father, of like, what would I do for my kids? Look at these characters. Which character am I most like? And so that that emotional appeal to me is one of the reasons why I think it's, it's also holds a place in literature. So here's what we're going to do for the last 14 minutes of class. <clears throat> Please make sure that your name is up at the top. I've chosen a passage that I think kind of starts, uh, and you know, it's been a while since I've done history, but it makes me think of, huh, how did they even get in this situation? I think the way that Steinbeck conveys in this particular passage, here's what was happening, and here's where it started, you know, the struggle began. We're going to look at this passage, and I'm going to shut my app in just a moment so you can look at it. As you are looking through it, please go ahead and jot down your six word memoirs, your story, your annotation of what are you getting from it? What are you noticing, especially with the elements we just looked at today, of tone, attitude, purpose, effect, what else? Structure. Arrangement. <laughs> Arrangement, thank you, I forgot for that. Syntax. So you're, that's the scope you're looking at today. Of what are you noticing that I think is really masterfully done in this passage and throughout the book of these particular elements? So the first step is you're looking through, you're jotting down your insights. The second step is you turn to the very last page, and this is what we'll finish with in class on Thursday. You're identifying that over that tone and whatnot, but you're trying to develop your own questions for discussion of where did you notice things, but also where did your partner next Thursday notice an instance of structure, an instance of syntax. So you're developing your own questions, but also kind of walking through that process there. Are you clear what you're doing with this passage? So this last part is Thursday. I, I, I mean, I, I would say take a stab at it before you come. It'll be due by the end of class on Thursday, but I want to leave you as much reading time as possible on Thursday. So if you have this done, then we'll do a discussion and then we can try. So what kind of questions do you So kind of like this. These kinds of questions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you have PowerPoint online? Um. I don't, oh, I will. So I will, I will, I'll, while you guys work on that, I will make it available. Okay, got it. Yeah, so go ahead and dive in. We won't have time to finish today, but let's see what you noticed so far, and then I'm going to make this available online.